Hello and welcome to Round the Table with Chris Concern. It's great to um, be here doing this again. And we're, today we're talking about transgenderism in primary schools. And I'm delighted to be welcomed uh, to join, be joined by Nigel and Sally Rowe, um, who won a fantastic victory um, in a case about transgenderism in their son's primary school. Great to see you um, over from the Isle of Wight. Thank you for joining us. How are you? We're, we're good. good. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Thanks for having Love us on. Nice to see you. Great, and we've also got Karis Mosley, um, who is a researcher, policy researcher again for Chris Concern. Hey, Karis Hello. from Wales this time. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're watching live today, do put in your questions, comments um, in the comments on YouTube or Facebook, and we will see them, and um, we can try and respond to them as well. Um, and uh, so, Nigel and Sally, tell us what's happened to you uh, recently in terms of the victory that you've won. Well, we have got the victory. Well, God's got the victory, but um, it's amazing what the outcome has been. Uh, the government have finally, basically, are in agreement with us uh, regarding uh, this trans ideology that's being pushed in schools. So um, we won the judicial review, but it, uh, thanks to you guys at Christian Concern, you, uh, you were talking to... Uh, the I government. think you've got the right to... The, the judge said you have a case, there's a case to answer and there should be a judicial review on it. Yes. There we are. Yeah, that's that's correct. So we got that judicial review, yeah. um, and then uh, the government then I uh, gather have offered well uh, to face some of the legal costs, uh, but moreover they're going to change the uh, guidelines for um, you know the trans ideology that was being uh, pushed in schools. It's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Because it was it was all set to go to court, and the government settled with you um, and said, okay, we're going to change the guidance, which is what you wanted. Um, yes, school, yeah. for primary schools on transgenderism, and we will contribute twenty two thousand was it um, to legal costs that you suffered um, to get this far. So it's it's a massive back down by the government, having um, gone through and complained all the way through. So tell us what prompted this. It was five years ago, wasn't it? What prompted this, Nigel and Sally? Yes. Um. So yeah, five years ago we had two cases in our school with. Um, we have two sons, they're now 13 and 11, but both when they were six years old, they both encountered boys in their class wanting to identify in the opposite gender. And um, it was just, there was no consultation. There was, it, it was just like, you, you, the child wants it, it's accepted. And this is where we were, were very concerned. And uh, so in both cases, we went to the school, we sought advice um, and, Basically, they were saying they were treating it like law that if they just if they didn't just go along with this, they would lose their jobs. And we could see that this affirmative approach was actually quite damaging and harmful. It caused a great confusion for our boys. They became very unhappy at school. We knew of other situations of other other children feeling the same way. And we thought this is this cannot be right. It can't be lawful. And this is when we, we contacted the wonderful Christian Concern. They've been amazing. They took us seriously from the get go. And made us aware actually that we weren't the only people that were experiencing this there were schools mm. up and down the country and actually this could be pushed through the back door and become law as it was being treated like law um and uh, but someone needed to speak out and so they encouraged they just uh christian Kassan encouraged us to speak out and any and christians on the whole parents on the whole get to speak out and after much prayer and and looking at the word, we, we realised this was a very, very important issue, thing to do. And so we made a stand five years ago. Um, it was quite, whoa, at the beginning, the, very hostile, uh, the media. But we just, we, we knew we, this was what the Lord had called us to do, um, just to be, obey him and speak the truth of what Jesus said. Jesus says that God made them male and female in his image. And we wanted to protect children. So, yeah, so... And we're just absolutely delighted now that um, the government have seen it and people are seeing it. Things are being exposed more and more about the damage this is doing to children. Even Tavistock Clinic is closed down mm. or closing yeah. down. So and Mermaids going... is being exposed as well. I mean, this is, this is it's, it's, it's fantastic. And um, but yeah, just to remind us, it's a Church of England school, was it not as well? It wasn't just any old primary school. Yes, I should have right. pointed that out. It was Church of England mm. school. And, and actually, we did all we could to begin with before we took any action. We we saw the head, we saw the we saw the teacher, we we um, contacted the local diocese, 
But in all cases, there was no support. The Darcy mm. showed no support whatsoever. Um, and so, yeah. you know, we went down that line and we realised, yeah, we actually need to take, we need to expose this. Mm. Mm. And and this and just to reflect again, it's a it's a six year old in a Church of England primary school, um, and the Church of England primary school says yes, you can change gender and come as a girl some days and a boy some days. That's right, yeah. and our children have to adhere to that. Uh, so just explain that. What were the, what were the children told? Well, well it, it wasn't verbally said. It, it was in a in the letter from the school that was sent to us that said if our child does not believe the other child's a literal boy or a girl, whatever gender they've changed to, and doesn't use the correct pronoun, uh, they will be deemed to be transphobic at uh, six years of age. And we too, as parents, would be seen to be deemed as transphobic. Not that we're worried about being labelled anything like that, but the, the point is for a six-year-old, it's just ridiculous. And it's, it's just wrong. You know, children at, at the age of six can't figure that out. They just see male and female. Quite so they have to sort of believe this is now really a girl. Otherwise, that's transphobic. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Got it in writing. Bearing in mind that Shocking. our son, our son is obviously was <clears throat> knew the child was a boy, and they played as boys. Yes. And then to go to school the following week, and then discover that the boy now at school is a girl wearing a uh, girl's uniform and and you know flowers and hair, li looking like a girl. It's for, for children. It is it, 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 it for them. It, they do. They just find it peculiar and bizarre. And of course, they start questioning. And that's exactly what happened. You know, my son comes home and says, "Daddy, I thought we had boys and girls." I say, "Well, we do. They, they do." And um, and then you have to explain it to a six-year-old the reasons why um, the teaching of this transgenderology is totally false and, it, and it's ludicrous. It's awful, isn't it? So, Karis, mm -hmm. how common do you think this is in schools? Well. I think it, it, that's very difficult to tell. Mermaids has been to a number of schools in England. Just um, explain who mermaids have... are, so everyone knows, first of all, sorry. Sorry? Just explain who mermaids are. Yeah, so mermaids, yes. I mean, obviously, we're all assuming that everybody watching knows that charity, they've been around actually since the 19... 1990s as an organisation. Whether they were fully registered then as a charity is unclear, but they started off as a support group Um for um, children who were referred to the Tavistock, because the Tavistock, the gender service for children and teenagers, goes back to 1989. I think a lot of people don't realise it goes, it was kept relatively quiet and there were very <coughs> few children, perhaps, of, I don't know, 110 years, but it was started off as a support group for them. And so they've always been in the bricks, actually, and, and intertwined with the Tavistock. Um, so, yes, yeah, so how common? Well, um, I don't know. Have they been into something like 40 or 50 schools in England? Perhaps more than that. And I obviously say Church of England as well is very concerning. Um, and they are named in one of the earlier versions of the anti-bullying guidelines that were printed by um, Church of England as well, uh, you know, as, as it listed as a resource, one among many. So obviously, the, once they're listed as a resource, their influence is wider. So even if they don't go physically into the schools, Mm -hmm. They've tended to be treated as experts. I think that's mm -hmm. fair to say. They're constantly in the news, constantly on social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Um, but there's been a massive backlash against them this week. Can you just talk about that? What's, what's happening? Yeah. So, so this, well, actually, from this past week, has been rumbling for a while. The Telegraph had done um, an investigation to them, um, which um, had led to the Charity Commission opening an investigation into into mermaids, and the reason was that they had found they've been offering these so-called chest binders um which you know so teenage girls who don't want to grow up to be women who want to be trans men would be not wearing a normal bra as they grow up but wearing binders which can be a bit of a problem they can crush their breasts and you know it's related to self-harm and self-hatred really that's what's in the normal world that we would say so they've been offering these for free to teenage girls since 2019 and the telegraph discovered that at the same time, without, the without parental consent, isn't that's it? That's right, without parental consent, or knowledge, or even knowledge. Yeah, and and um, so they're going on their online forums. And then Telegraph had also discovered that um, mermaids had been given taxpayers' money because there was a legal loophole. So other organisations were being given government money, which was then passed on um, to mermaid. Although the government had never instructed 
any of the payments to go to Mehmet. So that is obviously corruption. Um, and I think what happened then was the Telegraph, I don't know if the Telegraph sent somebody, but somebody went undercover um, posing, uh, um, you know, an adult was posing as a child on the, the Mermaid's online forum. Um, and this person complained that her mother wouldn't allow her to use the binder. Uh, so hence they found out that they agreed to provide her with a free chest binder. And then the instructions are given, I think, are really important, what they were told. Mermaids told this person that the binder shouldn't be worn for more than eight hours in one day. Well, that's not true about a bra. So obviously there's a problem with binders. It should be removed when they're exercising, which is a bit unusual. I mean, normally women and girls will get sports bras. Or if you were feeling sick or dizzy or too hot. You know, this is obviously very problematic. Um, and then they referred to breathing, doesn't it? It restricts breathing, these things. Well, and breathing as well. And I think we saw a little bit of this during the COVID pandemic, didn't we? This sort of even people in the trans world were admitting that don't use binders because COVID is a respiratory disease. So if you got the more right. serious version of that, you wouldn't want to be yeah. using a binder. And if that wasn't enough of a warning, so Mermaids actually, the Telegraph found that they had referred to this big study by Johns Hopkins University in the US, which is where actually. Um, John Money was, and where, where he started gender clinics for children in 1955, I think it was. Right. And they found that they looked at trans men, so adults, females who want to live as men. The vast majority of them, 97%, had quite major problems um, from using binders. So they had pain, rib fractures, changes to the spine, headaches, respiratory and skin infections, and muscle wasting. Well, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. good for adults, so why would it be good for teenage girls? Mm -hmm. It's a huge scandal. Yeah. You know, it's a huge scandal, actually. Um, and so it's no wonder that the Charity Commission then opened, has opened an investigation. Which is That's great. only last week. That's not even including the revelations from this week. Well, mm. and well, tell, tell us about the revelations from this week then. Go on, Karis. So that then is the um, issue of one of the trustees had um, uh, resigned after having spoken with a group that supported minor attractive persons, which is a, you know, a, a sort of pretentious word for paedophiles, basically. Um, mm. And so there's been a whole fuss about that. Why would, why would there be a link? You know, is it just a coincidence? Is it, you know, what, what else is going on? And I'm sure that the charity commission will look at, look into that as well. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I just want to mention that even on the Isle of Wight, you know, mermaids have gone into a so-called Christian school. Um, I sort of only found out last week. And, uh, a I'm Christian just, school? A Christian school as well? Church Christian, of England? Or? Yeah. I, I don't think I should mention the school. I'm not if I can. But, right. it, yeah, it's, it's a, got a Christian name to it. It's a Christian school. It has a Christian ethos to it. And only last week they went in there? Yeah, I think it's a few weeks ago, a week, two weeks ago. Yeah. I'm not, not just, exactly just, exact just date. Training just before the schools went back. Yeah, and is it a primary school or what? Secondary. Secondary, secondary school, in that case. Yeah. And I'm just curious to hear that because who 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 decides for this organisation to go in there? Yeah, being so destructive. I mean, what what is it? The gov would it be governors? Is it the head, uh, local education authority? I'm I'm just flabbergasted that it, especially if you're a Christian school that you would allow this sort of stuff in because we as Christians know quite clearly this is not what we do. And I'm going to say that it's child abuse to actually push this ideology in school and to be training teachers, what's more, to believe that it's normal and it's okay for training. It's, it's unbelievable. It is shocking. It is shocking and, and appalling. Um, the thing is, there have been guidelines from the Department for Education for schools in England to no longer allow groups in that would convey the message mm. to children that you can be born in the wrong body, which is what they used to say. But all that happened was that they mermaids and Stonewall backtracked and said, oh, we didn't mean that literally. Well, it was very easy to fish out tweets and Facebook posts showing that it was actually meant, you know. And so they will have probably done something to their resources. And I'm just guessing, but, you know, in order to continue going in, what, what trans groups tend to say these days is things like, well, some people have a mismatch between their body and their mind. And that's vague. And it's it's very hard to disprove that because quite often we could, you know, individual persons at any stage could feel a bit funny about their mind, their body, can they? So, mm. so weasley weak language like that helps, I suspect, is part of the issue. But yeah, there needs to be an investigation into the history, which is why the Charity Commission investigation is so important.
Yeah, mm. so, but we had a history of this, didn't we, Karis? Because there was a case that we ran um, a few years ago now with a, another church being a primary school where mermaids went into that school. It was John Parker. Just remind yeah. us about that, Karis. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was a recording that we managed to um, listen to, and um, that was of all the the training um, that was that was given. You know, they were they were being told it was training for primary school teachers, but the, I think the governors were invited as well. Um, and um, so the, the let me look at the basic f philosophy. Okay, so some of the so there was junk science, obviously, um, trying to say that they binary male and female is just something in western culture those are more the more outlandish things that were said <laughs> um I, it, yeah that, that's kind of outlandish um forcing teachers to use their terminology okay and and conveying the idea that if you don't use preferred pronoun pronouns hate incidents so very similar to what Nigel Sally described you know about transphobia and hate um yeah. when it's actually a concern about being truthful and helping children to understand the importance of that um, pushing the narrative about suicide when the statistics don't always add up. Um, but also saying things like gender is a spectrum and sex is a spectrum. These things are not true. And I, these were some of the things that most concerned John Parker because he was a biology graduate. Um, you know, it, it's scientifically so John, untrue. Reverend John Parker was a, was a governor at this right. primary school that was associated with his church, wasn't he? Yeah, and he was a, a vicar, and so he was present and, and yeah. was just really upset about that. But also gender as a spectrum. I mean, that came up later in the case, um, the judicial review against the Tugstop with Kira Bell. She related that one of the psychiatrists had tried to, in a way to try and wean her off the idea that she could, she could really become a man, mm. um, suggested she might want to think of gender as a spectrum. Well, outside the little world of LGBT, nobody thinks like that. It's it's just um, it's not even fake science. It's just this idea that makes no sense. <coughs> yeah. Um, and to introduce that to primary teachers um, as compulsory, you know, um, I suppose it's training or continual professional development, whatever the right word is. Yeah. Um, you're concerned about then whether it would get into PGCE, which is a higher level. But it was it was thinking. pseudoscience on the one hand, and they also misrepresented the law, didn't they? In yes, that, in that right. training, they, they claimed it was a hate incident or hate hate speech yeah. or something, and it is not um, what they said. It's incredible, really, that they get into schools and and do this, isn't it? Um, and yeah, we made a big fuss about it at that time, and and nothing happened, you know. And now suddenly more, mm. you know, more is being exposed, and now you know we're kind of being vindicated here, as Naj and Sally mm. have been vindicated as well. Yeah. Um, I, mean, like, I mean, I go to many homes. I'm a gas engineer, so. You know, yeah. I, I see lots of different people because I'm repairing boilers and things like that. And the majority of people, if I mention this sort of stuff, they can't get their head around it. No. It seems like the majority do not agree. And this, I think, what I, what I really struggle Particularly when it comes to children, isn't it? Sorry? Particularly when, it means you're, when it's about children. Yeah, children. I think, and when I speak to people like that, they really find it insidious that you're doing this to children. Um, yeah. And I, I find it so odd that I'm meeting these people that they're in absolute 100% agreement. And yet there are people who I thought would be reasonably intelligent, that's teachers, governors, people like that, but they would never allow this stuff to come in. And I'm sort of, so I get, I, you know, I can see within the culture that actually the majority don't agree with it. It's only a tiny minority. And how that tiny, tiny minority um, seems to have such an influence of allowing organizations like this into schools. Yeah, and what we've people found, are scared, aren't they? People are scared, and um, uh, yeah, for some reason, this small, small minority group have a loud voice, and it, it's the silent majority. But you know, we there were parents in the in our school that we heard about, agreed, but were were wouldn't mm. put their name yeah, to it, yeah. were very quiet about it. So yeah. it's, it's incredible fear, and we were we were we were pretty um, worried about putting mm. our head above the parapet ourselves and we got a backlash didn't we so. tell us about that what backlash do you get well I, I guess it just went wild on 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 social media and on and on the media it went international mm. but the the it was we were just so it the, the oh. media was so aggressively against us uh we were mm. we, we had so many interviews on that yeah. one day didn't we and yeah but nasty was, phone calls as well wasn't yeah. it and you know people in the street shouting shame on you you know, that, that sort of thing you just wouldn't in in public that's what got me was they were doing it in public 
In fact, if anything, I think they looked a bit foolish because mm -hmm. maybe other people didn't understand why someone would be shouting in public uh, like that. So, um, yeah, it's intimidating, uh, but we, it doesn't bother us anymore. Um, I mean, we did go as far as we did by CCTV for the house. So we'd see who would be coming up the drive because we were concerned uh, someone might come up the driveway and harass us. But actually, it just happens people who supported us uh, would knock on our door, which was actually very encouraging. But again, really, it's the majority that do agree with you. It's a small minority that don't. But the minority are so militant and so aggressive and so angry. That's the thing we did, we saw, wasn't it? There were yeah. the absolute depth of anger and hatred from, from the... Uh, from these lobby groups and some but of see, you see talking about majority and minority can I just jump in there that, mm. that you're right about it being the majority of the public wouldn't agree and we know that from polling as well but these groups have been around for decades and they've they started off almost underground and i think it's really really important to understand that they're well organized and have little groups they have family groups and other things around the country and um obviously there's a lot of gender clinics especially in england there's something like 14 gender clinics once you have them for adults they'll cater to teenagers as well mm. and, and what's happened is stretching down the age of the permission for these things since we had the gender recognition act so it's been a slow and strategic build-up by which time they've captured institutions when nobody was looking See, because when when the gender recognition act was passed there was no public discussion about whether this should apply to children it was all about adults but actually, I've seen little bits of evidence that the, some of these um, trans groups, and I'm not going to name any of them, you know, women's was not actually named, but were wanting gender recognition for children. It was there mm -hmm. in the background. And puberty blockers are already being used and brought in. So this has been, you know, underground and, and around, and we just most people wouldn't have noticed. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I, in fact, you said it started in the 90s. I had no idea. And I think that's the thing. When we made the stand at the beginning, I, there was, on my part, some naivety. I just automatically presumed that when we challenged this, that everyone would be going, absolutely. It makes absolute sense. It's just scientific. We have boys, we have girls. Yeah. Yeah. And then there'll be a backlash from the public say, we don't want this. Yeah. Um, but actually, it wasn't. But this, this tra the biggest tragedy, as I mentioned it before, was the response of the church. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Either actually against you or just, just silent. Yeah. So for us, that, that again was a bizarre situation. I mean, to think that Sally, Sally used to go into the school doing something called Open the Book, oh, yeah. so it's, it's teaching of the Bible. And, then, yeah. and I believe some people in that group were against her. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that? Really? So I talk about unbelievable betrayal, mm -hmm. unbelievable betrayal. And, and then I began to realize, I'm thinking, well, Lord, there's a, there's, a, there's a crisis of biblical authority now. Yeah. There's a crisis mm -hmm. that Christians don't seem to know their Bible anymore, what God says mm -hmm. about gender. Yeah. It's very simple, male, female. Yeah. Matthew 18 isn't mentions about protecting children. There's yeah. a bit of consequences if you don't. It, 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 it goes to show that maybe there's an issue with people not being in a relationship with Jesus, but just being part of a religious organization. Yeah. So, um, but the, the, I'm yeah, sticking with the Church of England for a minute, because John mm. Parker's case, Karis, just talk us through that, because Stephen Cottrell was involved in that, wasn't he? And, and it wasn't just about mermaids going, it was also about a child transitioning without any of the, without the parents of the other children being told, I understand as well, isn't it? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually, I'm not so up on the on the cultural thing myself i know generally that there were other oh. clergy who were unhappy weren't there yeah well no stephen cottrell was the bishop of chelford yes. at that time yes, and he was. supported the school in yes, allowing this child to transition and in allowing mermaids to provide training he is now archbishop of york yeah right yeah. so that's that's where it goes right the archbishop of york was was supporting mermaids in a primary school and yeah. supporting allowing a primary school child to transition gender yes right that's it that goes right up to the top. This you know the Archbishop of mm. York, right? Yeah. And of course, yeah, you know, the um, the Church of England has um, modified or allowed the the reaffirmation of baptism list you to be used to affirm a person's acquired gender or trying to affirm transition of gender of a person. So this this basically it's gone right into transgender list um, for the Church of England as well. So I think I would say about the, 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 the liturgy, this, right? When again, when we've looked at that, it, we've tended to think of it from the point of view of adults. Uh, what has not yet emerged in all of that, as far as I can see, is 
that it could be applied to teenagers or even small children, because obviously the Church of England practices infant baptism. Yeah, right. That has not been discussed. I and mean, I just noticed that, that when we go back to Stephen Cottrell and, and there was this denial and social media and so it was very subtle, but then there were all these clergy said, they, because John Parker said that the message had been conveyed to him that he could just leave the Church of England. Yes. And then there were many others who had told that. That is what that is what I know. I mean, yes, generally the bishops as denominational leaders have lamentably not just failed, because that makes it sound like they were trying to do something good. They were on the wrong track. Mm, mm, um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, so um, we've got a question here from YouTube from David. Um, not sure how to pronounce your surname. Anyway, he says, do any of you think this is going to improve at all? What direction are we heading in overall? Nigel, I, Nigel, I, think, I, I, am, I am really, really excited, actually. Uh, very positive. Because of obviously what's been exposed regarding to mermaids, and I think the culture was everyone was too scared to say anything and not challenge it. We started that challenge and mm. people are now getting on board. People have had enough of this. The, the, the devil has overplayed his hand on this, He's overplayed his card. And I think it's heading in a direction where the government are going to put in um, maybe legislation or putting guidance in, in order to stop insidious ideologies like this coming through. Um, and I think it's actually positive. I have to say, originally, people used to say to me, well, oh, well do you think you're going to win? I said, of course not, we're not going to win. I said, no, we're never going to win. Uh, it's because I'm in mean, the Bible says, you know, ultimately the heart of man is wickedly depraved. Um, but, you know, if, we, if, we, if, 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 we put, if you put your head above the parapet and you're willing to stand on God's word, stand on biblical truth, I do believe God will honor that. And I think this is the most important yeah. thing is the church now needs to stand on biblical truth. All churches, whether it be the church, being Baptist, Methodist, I mean, the Methodists, I believe, are given into. Uh, the gay marriage thing. Um, so it's now that the church has got to be uh, stronger in the fact we need to stand on the Bible. If they do that, I believe that you can start to reverse these things happening. Yeah, and two positive things. Obviously, the, we won, won the right to judicial review and the government are saying they're going to change those guidelines. And then since, um, more, more recently, Suella Braverman, she was the Attorney General. Yeah. Let me read this. She put, the problem is that many schools and teachers believe incorrectly that they are under an absolute legal obligation to treat children who are gender questioning according to their preference in all ways and all respects from preferred pronouns to use of facilities and competing in sports. All this is sometimes taking place without informing their parents or taking into account the impact of, on other children. Anyone who questions such an approach is accused of transphobia in my view, this approach is not supported by the law. And uh, she also spoke about, even with our case, where ch our children were deemed transphobic if they didn't r use the right pronouns. She addressed that as well and said that the right of freedom of belief, thought, conscience and speech must be protected. So we do f see the tide is changing. There's a lot of, we're, we're greatly rejoicing and praising the Lord that, things are moving in the right direction now. There have been court cases as well, uh, taking Tavistock Clinic to court. So many people, and more and more people speaking out and being bold to, to say things. So that's great. And as Nigel said, we just would be overjoyed to see the church speaking out more on this as well. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. I mean, well, honestly, it's, it's so to, do is to speak the truth, isn't it? I think they yes. were saying, oh, you're not very loving, but we do, we act. The whole, the our whole motivation for doing what we did was because mm. we we love <laughs> and we care for children. We want to. We could see that it was so damaging, and we want to protect children. Mm. Um, and to speak the truth is the loving thing to do. Truly and is. you, you, you took your children out of that school at the end, didn't you? That's right. But you persevered out of concern for the other children. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And, and how are your children doing now five years on having been homeschooling? How's that gone? They're great. They're great. I have to say, the Lord has more than blessed us. I feel yeah. we we see we we know his hand of providence every day, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have our, to say our to marriage, our, boys, our family life, it's just um, incredible. I remind the boys, I say, you're living the dream, boys. You're living the dream, you know, um, home, home educated. with a, I mean, Sally's obviously a qualified teacher. Um, she's doing great and the Lord provides provides work you know yeah. I, 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 I'm, the work is coming in so I'll be able to pay our mortgage and provide for my wife and family 
It's a great, a great gift, and we just are so thankful for God for it. We, it's not us. It's nothing to do with us. We are nothing. Christ is everything. It's brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's interesting. Okay. Another encouragement to Christians is that um, you know, every, every time we've had a knockback, someone's accused us of something we haven't done, and you know, so we, we've had yeah. some hostility. Yeah. Every time the Lord has brought a Christian to our door, or to our just, front door, to, literally, or just appeared from no, it seems nowhere to encourage us wow. um so wow. he, he more than provides and he we've known his supernatural protection and mm. it's just amazing so yeah we give and, glory to him and this is a, something so important and now i sort of when i speak i mean i preach at church sometimes and, and I, it's one thing i say to christians like listen don't, don't you know fear god yeah. you know don't fear man because mm. honestly you'll see god's providence you'll see an amazing place where you step out in faith and you've got to stand on his word mm. he will truly bless it and it's a uh, you know we and i've said this before again we you know paul writes about it i consider great joy that I'm, i suffer for my lord mm. uh, but there's mm. a supernatural fulfillment a supernatural joy you think well you know you're despised you think it doesn't bother us anymore it doesn't bother me and right. we kind of expect it we kind right. of expect it from the secular world the, the, the difficulty is when your family or when um, your, your so fellow brethren don't stand with you. But again, yeah. you know, if you read through scripture, that often happened. I mean, it happened to Jesus when, you know, he was betrayed. True. Yeah, true. Um, and uh, that's part and parcel of it. And I think the times thing, I mentioned this at church, I said, church, you know, be, be prepared that you will be betrayed. Mm, mm. You know, uh, and also, you know, check on yourselves that you won't betray others. Stand on mm. God's word. Stand together as a brother on God's word. Yeah, mm. we we found even in like the day when it was really massive, the day of media when it was quite overwhelming and quite, we walked away from that full of joy and peace, and that was supernatural. I mean, mm. I remember thinking I've been more anxious about silly things, we, we, and yet we were driving. It's like the yeah. circumstances are here, but we're the Lord sort of carried mm. us wow. through it. It was so surreal, wasn't it? Do you remember we were driving down the motorway after that day of interviews, and it was so hostile. Bearing in mind, we're just an ordinary couple that live by the beach, just ordinary people. Yeah. And we just sat there in silence, and I just remember we both both burst out laughing. <laughs> we wow. burst out laughing because it was so surreal, and yet yeah. we felt great joy. But we were together, weren't we? And it was great for our marriage because we just got closer to each other. Because at, the, at that time, you feel, you know, you only have each other. We we didn't know Christian concern personally that well yet. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, now time has moved on. I've got to know you on a personal level. Love you all to bits, really do. Very mm -hmm. special friends. Um, right. But at the time, I mean, you think even family, even family are just silent. Don't say anything. Um, yeah. The closest yeah. people to you. That's it's so hard. It's it is. so hard. It is very hard. And it, yeah. I guess the important is remembering that it's it's not our battle. The, yeah. The battle yeah. comes to the Lord, and He has already won the victory, and we stand mm -hmm. in His strength. Um, so praying every day, putting the armor of God on, reading the word daily, mm. that's super important. Um, mm. so you, yeah. focus on him. you know there's an enemy, but you focus on the Lord mm. and um, mm. and he's the one that's carried us through and made us so much stronger. I mean, our faith grew. The mm. word the word has been more and more yeah, real. It just came alive. Um, it says it's living and active, but it just we just saw that, you know. And when it says mm. brother, the portrayer, brother, we so we had that kind of you know where family conflict as well, but mm. and yet mm -hmm. and yet we knew great joy and peace. So that can mm. only be the Lord. And slandering didn't affect. I didn't go oh, poor me. It was like I felt sad for the person slandering, mm. and I wanted to pray for them, you know, and because I want them to know the Lord and know that joy for themselves, you know. I want them to be free of that anger. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So. Paris, any comments from you on where you think this direction of travel is on this whole area? Well, we've obviously heard what it's like for faithful Christians. And I, I can identify with some of that, what they've said. If you walk away from an unhealthy situation, an unhealthy church, um, because it's so important, it's about mind of Christ and creation. But when we look also at society and at schools, the fact is these groups are still in schools. The fact mm -hmm. is that trials on puberty blockers for teenage children are still being done because mm -hmm. the review by Dame Hilary Cass recommended they continue. It's still a really bad situation. You know, the Tavistock yes. has been shut, but these gender hubs are continuing. So I think that what we need to look at is 
for more people to make stand like Nigel and Sally, to think creatively about how they build Christian families, Christian community, Christian education, because there are so many needy people out there. There are so many children and young people who have been damaged or are being damaged by all of this, whether they're in mainstream schooling or already gone to these gender hubs or whatever, um, and that will one day think, what was I doing? What was done to me? I had words spoken over me that were lies. And, and mm. doing that indoctrination, I think, is a key factor, de-indoctrinating people mm. through Christian formation. It's going to be really crucial. And it'll be a huge, and there is a battle of that. There will be a huge battle. You've got the schools bill in England, for example. You've got in mm. Wales as well an attempt to clamp down on home education. You know, it's there are big challenges ahead. So the importance of standing, it's not just, oh, there's this great victory in the courts. It's much more than that. Mm. It's a continuous mm. journey. Isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So we've got a question here on Facebook from, I'm going to hopefully pronounce it right, but I apologise if not, um, Peter to Cass saying, um, yes, what can I do as a parent when I feel my Christian community goes on mute and when I express my concerns about the schools of my children? Um, well, Nigel, do you want to start on that one? He's nudging me. You're nudging Sally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I am a great advocate for home homeschooling, and there are some great Christian homeschooling communities. Uh, chess kind of is a kind of umbrella for Christian home education. What is chess? What is chess? It's, it stands for Christian Home Education, something System else. Service. But it's chess as in the game of chess. Um, yeah. That's how it's spelled. Um, and so there's a lot of networking of homeschooling families with that. Uh, I'm part right. of classical conversations, Christian classical, and they're they've just been an amazing community. They've supported us 100%. prayed for us, and but just um, and they meet they meet on a weekly basis. Right. Um, so they. They support you in your homeschooling, but, they, but we also meet as a group. Mm. That's an outstanding week. curriculum that they do. It's too. an excellent curriculum, God mm. focused, God centered. So, God -centered. yeah. Um, so, if you can do that, I know some people. So, I do, some people feel they can't afford it, uh, afford to do homeschooling. But if you can, and you just don't feel you're qualified or adequate to do it, that that is, um, I'd say that's a lie actually, because. God has entrusted you with your children. You are the best educators for your children, mm. um, and God equips you for the job. So, um, mm. so I would I would say that. Um, yeah, do you want to go? What about yeah. with schools? I mean, in yeah. terms of schools, if your children are in schools, you've got every right to go in mm. and find out what they're teaching your children mm. as well. If I'm honest, I mean, I've got to the point where I say to Christians, really, you've got to rethink it if at all possible, and they're your children. They're so precious. We're getting mm. to the point in the culture, maybe you're going to have to take your children out of the school system. Because I do know a number of parents who have kept their children in the school system. And, and, and sadly, they, the, the new trains of thought have infiltrated and mm. uh, they're losing their children. Um, they're losing their children to the Lord. And it's, it's agonizing for some parents. But if you can protect your children and, mm. uh, and, bring them, and you give them a good e Christian education at home, yeah. um, it's so healthy and it's so good. And we see that in our own children, don't we? So, uh, we're, yeah. and we do have, you know, great compassion for those who can't afford it. But if you can find, I mean, maybe you can go to grandparents for support and help in that, you know, financial support on it. Um, it's, it's, it's so important. Families All communities can support each other and share the teaching. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, we we'll do that in God. church. You know, someone in church is struggling financially. Well, the church comes together. We we'll put yeah. money together in order to support those who are struggling. It's, yeah. Yeah, Karis, any comments for you? What parents could do, should do, particularly when the Christian community goes on mute. Um, that's the thing. I think that's they should look for Christian materials for school, what suitable material for children, because they're going to be yeah. reading un unsuitable storybooks in schools yeah. and you know, unsuitable videos. Um, honestly, if your church isn't supporting you, try to find another church or create your own mm. home church. Yeah. I really would say that. I mean, I'm not saying that because I'm the sort of person who hates tradition or anything, because you get people who just want to just ditch everything for the fun of it. But this is so important. They are your children. They have one life. And, and children develop so fast, and that means yeah. that they can get corrupted really fast. Yeah. And then and then the development slows down as they get older. So that also means that undoing the damage will take longer. Yeah. So time is of the essence, I think. Yeah. Well, listen... Um, it's a fantastic result from um, Nikki, sorry, Nigel and Sally, and um, and Suella Braveman's comments saying that children should not be allowed to misgender 
or not be punished for misgendering children um, is very encouraging in terms of what the, the guidance from the government will be. And they promise to revise it. So we hope that it is really robust. So please pray uh, that it is robust and engage with that. And we're, we're pleased that Mermaids has fallen from grace this week. We have got a petition out, which I think we'll put in the um, comments now, now to keep trans lobby Mermaids out of primary schools. Um, so um, do 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 that. We started that position in 2019 when we had the um, original case, I think, with John Parker, um, and um, we're we're building on it now, and um, we're just trying to raise the profile of this issue. But it's great that it has got a lot of profile in the media um, this last week. The whole thing about um, um, transgenderism, particularly in primary schools, but also in secondary schools as well. And um, yeah, we're hopeful we'll see more change in this whole area and more pushback. And we're so grateful for. Um, those that have actually gone before us and stood bravely and challenged as Nadja and Sally have and um, seen the fruit from it, even if it has taken five years to get there. We're really, really grateful for you, Nadja and Sally. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Well, we're very um, grateful. Appreciate you. Amazing. And <laughs> and thank you, Karis, for joining us as well. Thank you if you're watching and listening. I hope you find that really interesting as I did. I look forward to catching up with you again next week. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and see you again next week. Thank you very much.